All right, let's jump into this thing. So, uh, you know, why is it important to go digital? And what, what do we mean by that? Going digital is just, you know, taking your, your aspects of your business uh, digital so you're not doing manual processes. So today, homeowners are used to conducting business digitally. Uh, the way customers rent movies, uh, hail a taxi, order food, buy a car, or even a mortgage have all changed thanks to technology. Consumers are accustomed to being able to research and make a purchase right from their mobile devices. Everyone, I mean, you have a smartphone on, on your person at all at all times. Receipts show up through their em emails, documents are signed digitally. Uh, consumers can track the progress of purchases right up until the moment it is delivered. However, the ability for homeowners to transact with home improvement uh, or home services contractors using digital methods is still not the norm. So uh, the home improvement industry is one of the only industries left untapped with technology. So why it is it important to go digital? Um, you know, contractors who have adopted technology show up to their appointments and spend a lot of time in the house and often convey the cost by writing the amount on a piece of paper or sending the estimates in an email or even snail mail. Homeowners often complain about getting estimates after several weeks delay. The prices quoted often vary widely from one contract contractor to the next. Writing up a contract is still done using a handwritten carbon copy piece of paper. So in a nutshell, homeowners are kind of like demanding this stuff at this point. Uh, always use the analogy of Amazon. Amazon did not become the largest retailer because they are the cheapest. They became the largest retailer because they are the most convenient. It is so easy to go on Amazon. I needed batteries the other day. I didn't want to run to the store and get batteries. I opened up my phone, literally why I had the drawer still open looking for the batteries. I tapped in there, a couple taps, a couple swipes, and I had the batteries at my doorstep two days later. It's just super convenient to order it from Amazon. Uh, it is not convenient to buy a home improvement project. So going digital uh, is something that can make that much more convenient. And it is a um, way that the industry is going to go. It is not going to stay the old fashioned way, doing everything manual. Uh, companies are already starting to break out into digital tools. There are a ton of digital tools out there and, um, you know, customers see that. And when uh, contractors go out and they're doing everything digitally, another guy comes in and he's doing everything half digital or mostly analog, uh, you know, customers pick up on that. There's a lot more value and it seems the perspective from the customer is a lot better of making the, the purchase through someone who's doing everything digitally. Um, you know, going digital's goal is to, to solve pain points. There's pain points involved on both sides, the consumer side and the contractor side. Um, I have a couple of pain points that we highlighted here, just in, in the equipment that you would need to go digital, uh, specifically like computers and tablets, et cetera. Uh, the tools and processes that you could possibly use to go digital, uh, presentation materials, how to take them digital, and some ideas behind that. Communication, both internally and externally, you know, internally with your staff, externally with your uh, customers, and then timeline and accuracy of the project that was sold. So, you know, how long is it going to take to get installed? Um, you know, what is the accuracy of what was discussed at the kitchen table uh, compared to what actually gets installed, the end result? So just going to go through a couple slides and talk about these uh, pain points, uh, because going digital can really, there's tons of tools out there that can solve every one of these pain points. And that's really what this, um, you know, webinar is geared towards. So pain point number one is the equipment. I remember when I was a sales rep, I'd walk around, you know, uh, carrying some um, uh, three ring binders. I had a, a huge briefcase, I don't know, probably about a foot wide. Uh, you know, you can get rid of all that and just put everything into an iPad. iPads are like the most popular tablet in business. I know there's Android tablets. I'm sure there's tools out there uh, or software out there that you can put on an Android device. I know there's tools that you can put on a Surface tablet. Um, but here at Leap, we, we have tons of customers who use iPads and there's plenty of tools out there, including Leap, um, that work on that iPad that allow you to take all of your, uh, you know, clunky pitch books and all that stuff digital. Um, you know, pitch book's outdated, your price book. Uh, I, I remember when I was a sales rep, I'd walk around, I had a three ring binder that was a price book. It would have all of my um, roofing, siding, windows, doors, et cetera, pricing in it. And then um, every so often we get a price increase or a product change. And if everybody didn't make it back to the office to get that updated book, then it was out of date. And then you're out there selling things and everybody has a different version of the price guide, et cetera. So digitizing your price guide is something that is just a no-brainer. Uh, manufacturer inventory, there's other tools out there that will allow you to connect directly to manufacturers to view um, pricing as well as like visualization 
uh, I remember when, again, when I did in-home sales, we had a, um, well, I sold doors to a manufacturer called Provia, and we had a, uh, they had their own application that worked on an iPad. It was beautiful. I would put it in the customer's hands and the customer would just tap around and their door would change, their handle would change, the, cut, the glass package, et cetera, would all change. And um, it would give me warnings and all that on if stuff was incompatible, if I couldn't put this particular lock on this door or the mail slot wouldn't go, et cetera, um, you know, or the size limitations. So check with manufacturers and see if there's any tools or tools they have. A lot of times the manufacturers will offer you tools that are free. Um, you can download them and start using them today. Uh, measurement tools were another huge uh, win when I did in-home sales. Uh, we used uh, Eagle View for roofing measurements. Uh, they have since came out with so many more uh, tools that you can do this with hover uh, roof scoop I know are two that we integrate with there's other ones out there that do it I know I roofing roof snap is another one um, but measuring with a, a tape measure and a ladder I remember I used to go on appointments and I'll wear a nice and a polo shirt sometimes with a tie uh, you know button-up shirt with a tie and customers say hey where's your ladder at and I'm like oh you don't understand I can do it all digitally and here let me show you then and it's satellite measurements and the customer piques their interest they're used to the guy coming out you know with the a tape measure on it on his hip, you know, tool belt, a ladder on the top of his truck, and he's going to put it up and get on top of the roof. I show up and it was a little bit foreign to them. And, um, you know, it piqued their curiosity. And I was able to go in, show them how I measured the roof using satellite imagery, uh, explain how that took away the human error involved with measuring it manually, and, um, you know, made it so that I could really blame the sticker shock of the price on the measurement tool as opposed to you know me pulling my tape measure and coming up with a completely different price than what the guy behind me did. Um, so when going digital, just a few things to consider when purchasing equipment. Uh, you know, uh, iPads is what we recommend is most popular, uh, super secure, they're updated, uh, they're sleek, they work with almost anything, uh, especially if you have an iPhone, you can sync things to it. Uh, it's best if you get a, a newer iPad that's running the latest operating systems. That way, you, you know, you get the latest updates from all the software uh, manufacturers. believe right now, we're actually, I think today or yesterday, Apple just released iOS 14.5, but you just, just make sure you're on the latest iOS. Um, you know, so if you're going to purchase a used iPad or something like that to get this thing going, um, just make sure it runs the latest one. Um, train your team on the device. So, so many times with Leap where we're onboarding something, you'd be surprised. Uh, I remember one customer was onboarding and trying to set up the whole entire thing without an iPad. And they're using our back-end dashboard to configure everything, which makes the iPad behave the way that they want it to. And they had no way to test it with an iPad. So just make sure your, your, your employees, the reps who are going to be involved with going digital, or at least a, a certain part of the process going digital, um, that they have the devices that they need and they know how to use it. Uh, and then usernames and passwords were a big thing. Uh, there are tools out there uh, here internally at Leap. We use a tool called LastPass. Um, it, it is there is a fee to it, but it is super worth it. You can share passwords across devices. Um, it works uh, across iPads, Windows, Android, etc. They have an app for all of it, and you can really you can put the passwords in that thing. And you, if you know how like Google Chrome or even your iPad and it auto fills your password, well these are tools that allow you to share your passwords across devices. There's also ways that you can do it. Um, there are tools out there that allow you to do like a single sign-on where you can, this is a lot more complex, but it is available. Uh, you can have like one username and password that controls say like their email, but that controls all of their other devices that they log into. When you kill their username, their email, then it kills all their other logins. Um, internet connection is another big one. Uh, you know, there are some devices out there, Leap is one of them, that um, the majority of our software works without an internet connection. Um, the home improvement uh, industry, home services industry, you're out at customers' houses, you're not always guaranteed to have a cellular signal, and you don't want to have to uh, have two sales processes, one when you have internet and one when you don't have internet. So when you're looking at tools and equipment, uh, you know, make sure you entertain uh, Wi-Fi or how the thing's going to connect to the internet. They have the different tablets. Some tablets come with the cellular built in. Other tablets are just Wi-Fi only. If you're going to buy the Wi-Fi only ones, it's a good idea to uh, you know, make sure you have uh, the ability to tether to a hotspot, whether it's your iPhone or a separate hotspot or your Android phone. But uh, you know, hotspot is key. Worst case scenario, you might want to connect to the customer's Wi-Fi. I have done this. 
there's some customers that are a little leery of you connecting to their Wi-Fi. So it might be a good idea just to connect. If you know your sales rep is not going to have a signal um, when they get to the house, you can maybe explain this, uh, why they would need an internet signal before the sales rep gets to the house and then maybe ask the homeowner if it would be okay for them to connect. Um, otherwise, just have a backup plan. If you don't have an internet, internet connection, make sure the software works without an internet connection. You can get through the process. Leap is one of those pieces of software. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to have a backup plan for when you know your rep does not have an internet connection. Of course, battery is another one. You'd be surprised. I was guilty of it myself. You take your iPad out of your work bag. You plug it in. You know, you're leaving to go to your next appointment, whatever. You forget the charger, and then the thing dies when you're you're out and about in the field. So, you know, make sure you have chargers. Um, I now currently in my book bag that I carry wherever I go, I call it my football. Uh, I carry my laptop in my iPad in it wherever I go. And I have a charger that never leaves that bag unless I'm like not at my house. So if I'm at my house, I would never pull the bag or at my office. I would never pull the chargers out of the bag. I have a spare one in there so I don't forget it. So in order to have a business, uh, you need to have customers. And customers don't always start out as customers, as you may know. Uh, they will first start out as a lead. And over time of gathering all these leads, scheduling appointments, preparing estimates, following up, et cetera, you're accumulating a ton of valuable data. One of the best things you can do for your business is to digitize all of this data. It will, keep, it will help keep you more organized, present much better uh, from the customer's perspective, uh, and provide you a way to mine all of this data in the future. So, uh, you know, CRMs is a, is a good tool to do this. It's kind of like where a lot of people start, uh, customer, uh, CRMs, customer relation management. Um, you know, and then they see a CSM, they have those as well. Uh, you know, you can auto-populate documents into it. This is one of the tool, uh, uh, hubs that we connect into. So Leap is kind of like a, a center point for the sales process, and we can push data back into your CRM, um, which will keep track of all your customers, contacts, when to follow up with them, you know, what, what was the reason that they did not buy or when's the next best time that they're looking to buy, et cetera. Uh, keep track of all your estimates inside of CRMs, um, you know, and any photos and stuff like that. So just exploring, uh, you know, a CRM is uh, highly recommended. Um, estimate calculating software, it's another thing Leap does, uh, but there are plenty of softwares out there. I've seen some really advanced uh, Excel spreadsheets uh, for calculating good, better, best estimates. Um, you know, so uh, generating prices quickly, it's usually the same math done over and over again. Using a piece of software to do that math over and over again is low hanging fruit that you can do to digitize, you know, or, or use technology to, to cure some of these pain points that you're experiencing on a daily basis. And then photos is huge. Uh, you know, everybody has a smartphone in their pocket now. If you have an iPad, you have a, a camera on it. So using photos to document, you know, problem areas to document, uh, maybe things that you have identified that the customer decided they're not replacing, um, you know, and they want to, you want to take pictures of it and document it so that they don't come back on you and say, hey, well, that wasn't like that or blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's so many softwares out there that do this. A lot of them are built native into your device. If you just wanted to use it and have it sync into the uh, um, Apple iCloud or you wanted to go into the Google Cloud or whatever your service is, whatever cloud service that you want to use, syncing photos back and forth. There's even softwares out there that are made specifically for this. The one that comes top of mind is Company Cam. Uh, is really cool. It like, um, uses the GPS to figure out you know, where you're at and allows all the photos to sync via the GPS. So, you know, digitizing this um, uh, you know, sharing of photos and documents is something that is, again, low-hanging fruit um, that can really help you alleviate some of those pain points with paper. Um, so most everyone on this webinar likely has some aspect of their business uh, already digitized. For example, you, you probably already have a website stood up that customers can talk, contact you about getting an estimate and just read a little bit more about, about your business. You can probably send the customer an estimate or proposal via email. A lot of people are doing that now. Uh, but what about brochures or literature about products that they're interested in? Can you send that easily? Uh, ask yourself if you have an easy way to send these types of documents uh, to your potential customers. Uh, you should be looking at every aspect of your business to figure out where technology can be used to streamline anything. A minimal effort, high impact option is to start with the CRM, like we mentioned just a slide ago. A CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. It is a tool that can keep all your leads, appointments, customers, jobs, et cetera, in one location that is easy to manage. A CRM is a must for any business who is looking to scale. 
we have hundreds of companies that use Leap, and any one that has, you know, I'd say probably two or more sales reps use a CRM. And, uh, you know, getting a CRM and just saying, okay, we have it, we're paying for it, and we're putting our customers in there is one thing, but actually using it is another. So there's so many times, again, I think it's the majority of companies who have a CRM to use probably 10 to 20 percent of its potential. So learning your CRM and understanding uh, what you can do with it and setting up the automations and really getting into the weeds, attending the webinars, attending the training sessions. Uh, sometimes they have in-person things which are starting to finally come back. Uh, you know, going to those will pay huge dividends. I understand you know, it takes time to do all this and there's time that you need to work in the business, but uh, time working on the business is, uh, you know, can pay huge dividends in the future and learning your CRM and the tools that you are already paying for and utilizing them to the fullest is something that, you know, it's just, it, it doesn't cost anything extra to do that. So I remember back when I was a sales rep slinging roofing, siding and windows, I would walk up to the customer's door with a briefcase filled with brochures, measure sheets, pitch books, credit apps and contracts. Countless times I'd be at the kitchen table pitching windows and doors. The customer would ask me about a certain color or style. When I would go to reach for the brochure that had what I needed, I'd realize I had left it with the customer on my previous appointment. Converting all of your pitch materials to a digital format is the low hanging fruit that you can do today. Uh, pitch books is another example of this. I used to have a one inch thick three ring binder that I carried to every appointment. I had things like the Better Business Bureau certificate, insurance information and letters of recommendation from previous customers. Every so often this book would become worn out and I'd have to replace it. Pages will be sometimes outdated or missing entirely because I haven't made it back to the office to get the latest version or copy. Um, although I was still able to sell deals doing it this way, once I finally went digital, all of these issues were gone. Uh, not to mention the impact it had from my customer's perspective. So Leap, uh, for those who don't know, like I created Leap, uh, started as a hobby uh, doing computer programming. And I... Um, the first thing that I did was actually uh, my pricing. The second thing that I did was put up, digitize all of my brochures and pitch materials. And then when I, I would go into the customer's house, I, I always had a copy. I could send the customer a copy right from my device. And I, you know, it was always pristine. I never had bent corners. I never had watermarks on it. I never had folded pages. It was always, you know, up there. It was always up to date. Um, and I could pretty much update it from anywhere. You know, if I tell, hey, can you email me that brochure? I'd put it into my Leap app. And, um, you know, it was there for whenever I need it. And then once we started to bring on, you know, sales reps and, uh, you know, the company that I worked for had adopted the platform and all the other sales reps started to come onto the, the platform, it was just so easy to update all of their devices. We would just go in, you know, update the brochures whenever we needed, update the pricing whenever we needed, and everybody's devices were updated. We really didn't even have to tell them hit, hit, you know, to do anything. We have to tell them to come back to the office. Matter of fact, I remember uh, like when we do price increases uh, previously, you'd have to let everybody know you were doing a price increase because it required everybody to come back to the office and update their books. And then uh, for a little bit there, we were doing spreadsheets and required everybody to come in and update the latest spreadsheet. And um, you know, when you're doing it with the with the software like Leap, uh, you can really just do a price increase and you know submit that thing. All your sales rep devices was just update in the field, and they never even knew that the prices went up anyway. So communication. Uh, communication is something often contractors struggle with. Part of the reason is because it requires a human to do it. Um, you know, and we know how humans can be forgetful, et cetera. Internal and external communication is something that can be easily achieved using technology. I'm sure everyone on here sends emails to their customers. Um, you know, for communication, it's like the common now. Everyone gets emails. I'm sending emails and reading emails on the daily. Um, however, what about text messages? Um, you know, are you sending text messages to your customers? Did you know that a text message is read on average in less than two minutes? You can't say the same thing about an email address. This is a super convenient way to communicate to your customers. And there's technology out there that can help you automate this process. So, you know, when you're sending text messages to customers, sometimes it might be a direct text straight from your phone. But there are softwares out there with automation that can make it so when you move the customer and you schedule their appointment, you know, it just it sent them a text message and it's super convenient. For example, my doctor's office uses text messages to confirm my appointments. Uh, they'll, they'll send me a text about 2, 
two times, uh, once about a week out and then also the day before my appointment. I can reply to the text to confirm I will be there or even reschedule my appointment without ever making a phone call. It was super convenient. It caught me off guard at first, um, but you know, anytime I schedule a doctor's appointment, uh, or my wife scheduled a doctor's appointment or one of the kids, et cetera, we can get a text message that, send, that lets us know when the appointment or a reminder. And, um, you know, we go from there. So the other thing is calendar invites. This is something that's huge. It's something we do here at Leap. Uh, when you schedule an appointment with your customers, are you sending them a calendar invite? Um, like the actual invite that allows you to just, you know, and adds that little notification onto your calendar is what I'm talking about. This is something you can do today and it will immediately approve your appointment cancellation and reschedule rate. Uh, at Leap, our sales reps are instructed to do this. We schedule an appointment for a demo of our software and we immediately send them an email with the calendar invite in it. So it put blocks that thing off in their calendar once they accept it. Um, and our uh, cancellation uh, slash reschedule rate plummeted once we start doing that. Something you can do today using technology, tools that you're already probably paying for, um, and really there's no extra effort. Um, what about, um, do you share any information on what to expect before you go to the customer's house? Many times this is the first time a homeowner is making this kind of purchase. They do not know what to expect during the buying process. You can make your life's feel, make your customers' lives feel, you can make your customers feel a little bit more at ease by sending them an email before you show up to their house, uh, letting them know what to expect. Little things like this go a long way and can be all automated using technology. What does your follow-up process look like? Are you waiting for your customers to reach out back to you? Uh, or are you proactively engaging with them until you close the deal? Uh, this was something I struggled with as a sales rep. I always try to do the one call close because my follow-up was terrible. You know, uh, using technology, uh, or you know, without technology is a very manual process. Um, however, it really doesn't have to be that way. You can, uh, with tools, again, like Leap, um, you know, shameless plug on this webinar, but uh, if you're using Leap, you can have all this information push, push back to the CRM and then have your CRM based on which stage you updated the appointment in, just start sending emails and reminders and put things on your calendar. And there's so many different things out there that you can do. Um, you know, you just gotta make yourself familiar with uh, the tools that are available. Like I mentioned before, for homeowners going through this buying process for a home improvement project is often very foreign. Uh, if you're in the industry, you're very familiar with the process and will naturally assume your customer is comfortable with the process. I was guilty of this uh, myself as a sales rep. I knew from A to Z what was going to happen on this buying process, but I had to make my customer feel comfortable uh, with what this A to Z process is going to look like. So just take a step back and uh, view your customer's buying process from their point of view. How long is it going to take before their project is complete? You know, make sure you set those expectations. And today, like, you know, from what I've gathered in the industry, I mean, there's a huge demand and, and low supply. And sometimes uh, projects, like I was looking to get a new door uh, not too long ago, and I think the turnaround time was like 12 weeks or something like that. It's crazy out there. Um, you know, and make sure that you communicate that with your customer. And you can do that with technology, um, you know, and then confirm with your customer is that timeline uh, acceptable and if not you got to make sure that you put that thing to bed before you move forward on the installation process because it's only going to get uncovered later on down the road um, you know if I was a customer and I had a question about where I'm at in the post contract process you know some people call this the production process where can I go to get this information you know where am I at what am I waiting on what's taking so long uh, should I send an email to get this information should I make a phone call can I send a text message? If so, who do I send the text message to? Letting your customers know all this information before signing the contract can pay huge dividends to get them not only to sign the contract, but at, as well as after they sign the contract. So that was one of the things I never wanted any surprises, both for my customer and of course myself, uh, once I sold a deal. So I would always try to, to uncover any types of, of objections or issues uh, before uh, we went ahead and signed the contract. So I made sure, like I always knew what my time frame was, what my lead time was to installation. I knew if, you know, something was being discontinued and we possibly couldn't get it. Uh, you know, and I would relay all this information to the homeowner because if I set the expectation that it's going to take, you know, 16 weeks before they can get a door installed, well, you know, they, I, I can write that on my contract because we went over that. And, you know, when it comes time later on down the road and we're at week 12 and the customer's like, hey, what's going on? And just, hey, man, like we discussed, you know, 16 weeks, we're almost there. This is where we're at in the buying process. And just have an open line of communication um, with your homeowner in a way that they can commu communicate back to you conveniently, you know, picking up the phone and calling 
is, uh, is inconvenient today. Uh, sending a quick text message is very convenient today. So, uh, you know, one thing every home improvement uh, or home services contractor has in common is that they all have a sales process. So uh, they all gather measurements. You know, if you guys are in the home improvement business, every one of you on here are gathering measurements of some sort. You'll use those measurements to create an estimate. Uh, you will then communicate that estimate to the customer, uh, you know, sometimes using technology like via emails. Um, and ultimately, you're going to have to write up a contract so that all parties can sign it so that you can move forward with the project. Um, Leap is a tool that will digitize this entire process. We'd love to show you a demo of what it can work. I know this webinar really wasn't about uh, the Leap and the product itself, uh, but if you haven't taken a look at Leap, uh, it, the, literally the name is was made uh, to, for a synonym of you know going from the old way, uh, the, the, the analog way, to the digital way. It is a huge leap in this industry to do that, and that is really what, where I name, our name came from. Uh, we would love to show you a demo of how all this would uh, work and how it can benefit your business and how we can tie a lot of the things that we talked about on this webinar um, into you know using technology so if you were uh you know able to do a, a quick demo it won't take long you know we can do them as quick as 15 30 minutes sometimes it all depends on how many questions stuff you have uh we'll buy you lunch send you a gift card that you can um buy lunch and then worst case scenario just say hey it's not for me Best case scenario, we can really change uh, your business and sometimes your life um, by using technology. With that, Liz, I'll go to the next slide and we can open up a QA. and a We do have some questions rolling in. So folks, um, please feel free in that uh, question box on your GoToWebinar control panel. Feel free to send us any questions or topics you'd like Steve to go over anymore. All right, we're going to go ahead and close this poll here. All righty, so to kick it off, uh, Bob would like to know what well, he wrote in saying, our company is already discussing with Tyler and Nick, glad to hear it. I'm just coming a little later to the process and catching up on all the possibilities so that we can make a decision. So uh, thank you so much for Bob for writing in. Um, if you do have any specifics you would like to uh, go, Steve to go over or any, um, factors that are you know uh, contributing to your decision please let us know Alrighty. next question um, what do you do if your customer wants to look at the digital brochure after the appointment would i need to still carry paper copies to leave behind uh no so um so if you're talking with leave specifically we have ways that you can send your brochures to the customer via an email so it's literally just as simple as like you can create a nice fancy proposal or a contract whichever one you want it works with both and um you can make that say whatever you want you put photos and all that in it and then right before you send it inside of leap there's a way that you can select the brochure uh or brochures that you want to include along with the contract or proposal and it'll uh, just come in the email it'll be, it'll be a clickable link um that the customers can click on and view it you can customize that to have whatever you want in it uh if you don't if you're not using leap you want to use another tool um, you know, there are ways that you can uh, host things on your website, host documents on your website and have links to them. Um, I've seen customers have like a resources library on their website where they could direct their customers to and maybe put in like an email signature. So when you send the customer an email, it has brochures there. So there are a ton of options. Um, the only ones I you know, know off the top of my head are ones like on a website and uh, the ones that we have built in inside of the lead platform. Awesome. All right. And actually, Bob wrote back into us. Thanks, Bob. Um, Bob writes, can you show anything on the post sale process like punch lists for the construction team, for example? Um, I think we have some good resources, Steve. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, inside of Leap, you have different you have different you have standard sections, which we call them contracts and proposals. So it's like what every contractor does. You send a proposal at some point and then you sign a contract at some point. Um, but then you can have other sections that you can make. So for an example, you can have a, a, a just call it a punch list. So you have a punch list section and you can have a punch list, say for, I don't know what kind of products you sell, Bob, but let's say it's roofing, windows, siding, doors. That's what I used to sell. So you'd have a punch list for each one of them. You have a little template in there for each one. So when your project manager goes out to the job, they would go into the punch list section and they could select which you know templates they need every template is customizable and you can have as many of them as you want and then they can just fill in the questions that you decide on what they are and when you come on with leap we have a whole onboarding team that helps you go through your process that you do now 
and you show us the way that you're doing it, and then we will help you digitize that. Um, so we will help you get the documents into the application, you know, your punch list into the application, your contract proposals, et cetera. And then um, if you use a CRM or if you don't, we'll show you how to get all of those documents back um, to the home office. So when you're out in the field and you're doing everything, uh, you just do your normal actions like you're used to. And then when you come back to the office, everything just appears there automatically. Awesome. All right. Next question coming in from Kate. What are some examples of digital measurement tools? Yep, so off the top of my head, digital measurement tools. Uh, so Eagle View is probably like the biggest, um, probably followed by Hover. So Eagle View is more for measuring roofing. That's what, uh, you know, there's tons of roofing contractors, like the industry standard um, is Eagle View if you're doing roofing. If um, you're doing siding, I think Eagle View now has a product that does that, um, but I know Hover does. And uh, the difference is Eagle View, you really, you can do it all remotely. You don't even have to go to the customer's house. Um, Hover, you have to take pictures, whether you take them, sales rep takes them, or the homeowner takes them, you have to take pictures of the house and upload them via their app. And then they'll return back to you a 3D model, which is really cool. We integrate with both of these platforms. Um, and they will give you measurements of roofing, siding, windows, gutters, trim, et cetera. There's other tools out there. Uh, RoofScope is one of them. I think they're called Scope Technologies but the main product is roofing. Um, they also do gutters. I believe they do siding as well. Um, so we integrate with all three of those, Eagle View, Hover, and uh, Scope Technologies. There are other ones out there um, that we're not integrated with off the top of my head, RoofSnap, iRoofing. Um, that's the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. There's five of them. All righty. Next question. Matt wants to know, what are some CRMs that Leap integrates with? Uh, that's a good question. Hold on, I think I had a slide in here for that. Let me back up the set. I have a slide right with this one. I believe that that list is uh, is always growing based on you know what our yeah, client. Yeah. It um, is. Oh, is that slide? All right there. So uh, market sharp, improve it 360, job nimbus, lead perfection, job progress, Salesforce. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, six of them. And then uh, we also, if you have like a homegrown CRM, some some of our customers do, we also have a way that you can do what's called web hooks. That's getting super advanced to beyond the scope of this webinar. So if you have a question on a specific CRM, um, definitely reach out to our support team and just message into the chat and um, they'll either answer it for you or direct you to a person who can. All righty. Bob would like to know if you if we integrate with Infusionsoft or Keep, K-E-A-P. So not directly, Bob, but we do integrate with a uh, third-party tool called Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. And Zapier is a way that you can connect one software to another. So if those two tools that you just mentioned uh, have a Zapier plugin, then we can use that as a tool to connect them. But I would encourage you to um, reach out to whoever your um, reps are. I know you mentioned them, but I have a short-term memory. And... Um, have uh, asked them if it will uh, connect to Zapier, if you can use Zapier to connect to those CRMs. I believe Zapier works pretty well with um, the Quick our QuickBooks customers as well. Correct. All right. All right, David would like to know, are there photo tools that I can draw on as well? Uh, yes, there's plenty. And actually, some of them are built right into your device. So I know the iPad has it where you can draw, you take a photo, you click the little edit button, Think the little pencil thing comes up and you can just draw right on your photos and save them. Uh, we also have that functionality built into Leap. So you can just import any photo um, and we have a whole sketch pad and um, it's like it was designed specifically for home improvement contracts. So you can put like a grid, uh, you know, and have like, you know, put, put it kind of like draw everything to scale, draw straight lines, change the colors, draw shapes, et cetera, put text overlays on top of things. So there are tons of tools out there that can do it. Um, Leap is one of them. It has that just built into the software. Um, iPad, I know, has it natively built in, and there's probably 10,000 apps on the App Store or Google Play Store uh, that will do the same. So it's really just identifying um, ex exactly what you need, downloading it, and, and familiarizing yourself with. Or just download Leap. Um, you, you know, sign up for a, a Leap subscription, and we have all this stuff built in. Another shameless plug. <laughs> All righty. Well, we do have a few more minutes if anybody else has any more questions. And I'm going to go ahead and put our information up here. 
So if can we can we see our can see a desktop? There it is. There you go. All righty. Cool. Well, for those who joined us today, thank you so much for sending in your questions. Um, if you would like any follow up afterwards, please feel free to reach out to us on the um, the email and phone number that you see on your screen now. Um, as we mentioned, if you're interested in speaking with Leap to set up a demo, we would be happy to send you complimentary lunch on us. Uh, we will also be sending out the recording of today with the slides um, afterwards this afternoon, which will include some hyperlinked um, resources that you can share with your team and can be very helpful when you're shifting into the digital side of doing things. All right, and with that, I think we are wrapping up. Anything else, Steve? Uh, that's it, Bob. I look forward to you to come on board. Well, thank you, everybody, and we will see you next Tuesday. Have a good one.